So data blocks. We've found that customers want to enrich their data sets, but that just isn't as easy as it seems. You first have to go out there, find a reliable source. Yes, NOAA has data. Yes, the Census Bureau has data. But getting the data from those sources into your own tools is not an easy task. And once you do have it in your own tools, you then have to think about transforming that raw data into a form that's useful for analytics. So weather data, for example, it's recorded at a, at a location level. You're, you're mapping weather patterns at a particular latitude and longitude. But for commercial use, we want to be able to tie that back into a zip code. And to, to tie that back into the zip code, that analysis, that transformation, takes time, effort, and manpower. So that's where Looker comes in. We've identified common data sources that are useful for commercial use. And we've taken that, and we've made that available to you as part of our platform for free and for use with any database. And so you can go in, take the data that we've ETL'd, transformed, and made available, grab a model from us, and start to combine that with your own data to start getting insights. So what does this look like in action? We worked with one of our customers, SeatGeek, and we looked at how weather patterns affected different events that they put on. We uh, wanted to identify different types of events, so festivals, for example, and looked at how the weather leading up to the day of a festival affected how many listings were available on SeatGeek. So as you can tell, on a beautiful day, listings tended to go down as you approached the event. And then on a day where you had bad weather, listings on SeatGeek tended to go up. And that made sense, because for festivals, because they're outside events, more people might not want to go to those um, as they learn about inclement weather. How, does the, how did this affect the pricing? So we found out that pricing tended to go down for festivals as you approach the day of the event. And on the actual day of the event, the pricing tended to fall down drastically, about 60%. And so we looked at festivals. What about other events? What about concerts or sports games? So we looked at concert events compared to festivals and looked at how pricing for those events looked at leading up to the day of the event when there was inclement weather. And we found that concerts, they're inside, and so the price tended to stay about the same the days leading up to the event. Whereas for festivals, you see that there's a clear drop. Prices drop about 60% on average. So this might all seem really obvious. Yes, I'm not going to want to go to a festival when it's raining. But SeatGeek had no way to identify these trends and, and attribute them to the weather on a given day without bringing in our data blocks. To cumbers it would have been cumbersome to go in, look at every single event, map that with the, the weather on that given day uh, without being able to, to bring in the weather blocks that, that we would put together. And so they're now able to identify the forecast, the pricing forecast for a given week, and use that to, to map trends and, and come up with forecasts. So with that, I'm excited to announce the launch of our inaugural data blocks. Uh, we're going to have demographic data at a very granular level, uh, five times more granular than the zip code level. So it'll be at a block group level. And you'll be able to look at income metrics. You'll be able to look at age, gender, race, and population metrics at that granular level. We're also launching the weather data, um, which we just saw. We're working with Google to provide weather data across the US um, all the way from 1920 up to the latest day. Uh, and we're going to be updating that information, working with Google on a daily basis, so you can easily get access to that data, combine it with your own data. We're also launching economic data, economic indicators. So you'll be able to pull in things like GDP, debt, inflation rates, interest rates, and compare that to your revenue or your, your growth. We'll also be making available geolocation data. So you'll be able to map those zip codes that you have up to the county level or up to the state level. And so then you just pull in these data sets from Looker, combine our models, and then start getting insights from your data. So to learn more, come to the, the tech talk that we'll be having at 2 o'clock, and I'll be available after for questions.
Thank you, Arthi. I know, I know I for one am really excited to get my hands on the economic data. I think it'll be really fun. So we've launched uh, a set of, of powerful building blocks to help you build analytical tools and remove the friction from uh, deep analysis. We've got everything from sort of the public data, the models on top of that data helping with analysis, data tools to do curated analysis for business users, visualization blocks for custom domain-specific visualization, and then ultimately action to allow you to close the loop on your analytics. And we wanted to take all of these building blocks, too, and build them together, too, in a best-in-class application for specific vertical business users. So we're excited to announce analytics by Looker and three initial applications, marketing analytics, IT analytics, and event analytics. These are end-to-end -end solutions for vertical-specific problems. Let's, let's take a look at what this is going to look like. So the first is marketing analytics. And we've partnered with Google's powerful marketing stack, their BigQuery transfer service, and BigQuery. And here we see a CMO's executive dashboard, too, for the, the high-level KPIs a CMO might use to run their business. You can see quarter-over-quarter uh, -quarter trends and time series. You can see uh, high-level trends to try and diagnose whatever might be happening. In this case, the digital marketer might notice that cost for conversions in increased materially uh, over, over the course of the last quarter um, and might want to diagnose why. So with, with marketing applications by Looker, it's really easy to ask as many questions as possible of your data. So you can easily drill into Texas to try and understand if an offline campaign is driving the change in, in uh, marketing performance. You can easily drill to the, the largest campaign that you're running and try and see if there's any overall trend that might be explained by this specific campaign. But because of Looker's unique architecture, a powerful model on top of an analytical warehouse, we can actually reach in and see operational data, granular specific data here. So in this case, this campaign, we can look at the underlying keywords, we can sort by performance of those keywords, and then take direct action from within your BI tool. So the sailing is uh, underperformed on a relative basis and it's trended down too. We can pause that, that keyword directly in, inside the Looker tool. It's, this is marketing analytics by Looker, giving superpowers to marketers, allowing them to be data-driven and close the loop. Next, we'll look at IT ops by Looker. If you're, like, if you're like us, you're running a large heterogeneous cloud, it's complicated to even understand what you're running, much less try and optimize for it. Here we have a, a high-level dashboard with summary metrics that an IT operations manager might use to, to run their business, to try and uh, optimize his, his stack. One of the biggest levers that you can pull with, with on top of AWS, and uh, this is built on top of AWS's uh, cost and billing data to using their Athena and Spectrum databases. One of the biggest levers you can pull is whether or not you've reserved an instance, too. So this, this IT manager can drill into cost and look at how, in fact, actually, the, the cost on non-reserved instances has been increasing uh, as a per percentage over time. And because of Looker's architecture, again, where you can drill into the underlying operational data, he can see the specific instances that are causing that cost. He can see, in this case, too, there's one instance that's not reserved that's actually the vast majority of the cost, too. And he can take action directly within Looker to reserve that instance. This is IT operations by Looker. We're giving IT managers their superpowers. Finally, I want to show you event analytics by Looker. I'm a product manager. I love event data. I love understanding customer behavior. This is the high-level dashboard a product marketer may, may come to to try and understand their customer behavior. We have high-level metrics, again, to see sort of the status of the application. Imagine this is maybe an e-commerce application, too. It's late in September. I, you know, maybe as a product ma manager or product marketer, I want to make sure I hit my quarterly goals. I want to try and drive incremental sales, too. So as a result, I'm going to try and find our most loyal customers, too, to try and push them a discount code, to try and get them to come back and transact more. I'd go into our cohort analysis tool. I'd look at the customers that have done the most cumulative transactions. I can select a grouping of these users, too, send them directly to our partner segment, 
where they can be sent to downstream marketing automation tools, and a push notification or an email can be sent to them with a discount code. This is giving product marketers superpowers. Again, these are analytics by Looker. They're powerful end-to-end -end applications for, for vertical-specific business users. We want to help empower the instrumented worker. Thanks.